Hi there, Madhushanka. Let's take a look at your set of essays here. This is the one about rainfall. Uh, it looks kind of long. Um, of course, in the format you sent it, I can't do a word count. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at what you said here rather than focusing on the word count. Let's see what you said. This line chart shows the amount of rainfall recorded in milliliters throughout 2018. It involves three countries, England, Scotland, and Wales. In England, the amount of rainfall in January was recorded to be around 110 ml, which increased by 5 ml in February and decreased to 90 in March. Three months later, it reached its lowest figure without the two. In June, uh, at 75, the amount of rainfall fluctuated uh, for six months. In December, the rainfall was 130 ml. Okay, um, let's talk about this paragraph a little bit. The grammar, little things, prepositions, um, some mistakes there. Uh, I want to talk about the, the, the months that you selected. Absolutely yes to January. Absolutely yes to December. Very good. Um, and then absolutely yes to June. The rest of the things that you selected, for example, February and March, I don't really understand why you selected them. And I also don't like the fact that you completely disregarded that second half of the year. So what should you have selected here? You should have selected the highs. Well, you were absolutely correct in, sele in selecting the beginning and the end. That's appropriate. But you also should have selected any peaks and any lows. You selected um, um, uh, the low, okay? But I have no idea what the peaks are. Okay, and so that's a problem. I'm missing some pretty vital information there. So it's okay to talk about fluctuation throughout the year, but simply say where it started and then say what the, you know, it had three peaks, one in this, this, and this month. Okay, and then also it had a low in here and the rest of the year was uh, characterized by considerable fluctuation. Okay, and then that's it. Let's move on. In Scotland, the amount of rain in January was 120 ml. There was a steep drop, bringing the figure to 20 ml in February. In the next month, the rain increased to its peak at 135 ml. Good. In April, the amount of rainfall was less than 50 ml. Then it slightly increased to 90 ml in June. From July to December, the figure fluctuated. Okay, now here it would have been very helpful if you had given us a range. It fluctuated between. 20 and 80, it fluctuated between 50 and 130, something, okay? In October, had the same rainfall, um, it had the same rainfall as in March. This, to me, is not really important. I mean, I don't know why you're pointing it out. Is it, is it the, the other peak? Uh, that's what I'm not really sure about. Um, it sounds like maybe it's the other peak. Um, you could have just said that in October, Scotland experienced its second peak at 135. Okay. Um, and now here, I don't know how December ended. So you're doing a really good job, but I don't feel that you've totally picked, um, absolutely the appropriate things to talk about. I think you've included some information, which was not so important. And then you didn't include some information, which was more meaningful. All right, let's move on. In Wales, the rainfall was just slightly below 50 ml in January. The figure increased slightly in February and April. There was less rainfall in 2018. I don't understand that. And I don't know why we're talking about February and April. Again, explain to me why these points are relevant. Why are they important here? But I don't understand this at all. In the next month, which next month now? You've talked about February and you've talked about April. So what month are we talking about now? Um, it rose to 110 and dropped to approximately, well, how does that work? So in the next month, so maybe this means May, it rose to 110 and then also in May it dropped to 50. So careful, this is not clear. Okay. Now using a little thought, I can understand that you're maybe talking about May and June, but the way you've expressed it is not clear. In July, there was the highest amount of rainfall, 130. Then it went down to 45 ml in August and remained constant until October before reaching 105 in November. In December, there was 55 ml rainfall. All right, so again here, I feel like you've not really selected the right information. You did select some of the right information. You talked about this peak. You talked about um, December. But then a lot of this information is really irrelevant, and I don't know why 
you've talked about it. So again, what you need to focus on here is those peaks, those lows. Yes, it was absolutely appropriate to talk about that plateau because that's the only period of stability in the entire chart. So absolutely mention that. Um, but again, I think you um, included some not important information. Now, why is this so important in this chart? For a couple of reasons. Number one, you've got 36 pieces of information here. All right, you cannot obviously talk about all of them. So it is important that you understand what the important pieces of data are, okay? And that's important for task achievement. The other reason is uh, practicality. When you have 20 minutes to write such a, such a task, um, I, I sensed from the beginning that you probably wrote too much because it's, it's a long task one. And uh, you have to economize time. All right, so it's really important to be able to pick out what the appropriate and the, the important pieces of data are. Now let's look at your uh, overview. In conclusion, in each country, the amount of rain in January is almost the same as in the month of December. In England and Wales, the amount of rainfall in January is less than in December. The rainfall in January is more than in December in Scotland. All right, well, uh, this is a little detailed, I guess, for an overview. I wouldn't say that this is overview. This is really exactly what it says, a conclusion. So that's not what an overview is supposed to do. Um, an overview would have been something along the lines of, uh, while all three countries had major fluctuations throughout the year, England, uh, on average, had the highest rainfall. All right. And you know that English had, England had the highest rainfall because it didn't have some of those lows that Scotland and Wales had. Wales had. Okay. So that would have been an overview. Okay, so um, let's move on then to your task two, which is about fathers staying home and taking care of children. Two question essay here. What could the reasons be? Is this positive or negative? Let's see what you said. In the modern era is becoming more common around the world uh, for Okay, for fathers to take the role of caretaker while mothers are developing their careers. I believe that this is a positive development and will support my argument with past events and a study from Qatar University. All right, that's very good. Firstly, there are more wor women working now. Now, why did you just go into this firstly? It makes a lot more sense to have a strong topic sentence where you're telling us what the paragraph is about. Okay, so... Um, rather than just going into this firstly, it makes a lot more sense for you to say there are a number of reasons behind this shift in caretaking. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to introduce the paragraph and you need to introduce it with a sentence like that rather than just going into your main ideas. Okay, so assuming you've written the sentence I'm suggesting, let's move on. Firstly, there are more women working now because of the awareness of women's rights. In the 1950s, the role of women was to cook, clean, and take care of their children. As the years go by, they are fighting for their rights to prove they are more than who they are biologically. This movement emerged during the 1960s until the 1980s United States. Right, this is irrelevant. Get this out. To this day, it is still an issue, especially with the wage gap, wage gap between men and women. Okay, also irrelevant. So these two sentences really don't belong here. They don't help your argument. They don't fit in your argument. They're just... They need to be removed. Um, let's see. So as the years go by, they are fighting for their rights. Well, not they are. Yeah, I guess they have been fighting for their rights to prove that um, they are more than they, who they are biologically. Okay. Um, right. So... Let's say, however, most adults accept that both men and women should have equal opportunity to strive for a career. Okay. Finally, more parents are sending their daughters for higher studies instead of preparing them to get married without the four. This has improved the, what does this mean, the women workforce? This has, this has improved the skills of the female workforce, uh, making women not more capable than men. You have to be really careful with this kind of language. Making women as capable as men in, okay, in many fields, full stop. You see, I'm going to 
suggest that you avoid language like this in teaching and especially fashion because it's a little stereotypical. It's a definitely an overgeneralization and um, you don't want to um, kind of say something that may potentially upset an examiner. Okay, so an examiner might not really look upon it very favorably if you say, oh, you know, women are so much better than men at teaching and fashion and so forth. Okay, so avoid that kind of language. For example, a study conducted by Qatar University states that in a branch located in Doha owned by Standard Chartered, there are 70% more women than men. Okay, fine. Um, now, the problem with this paragraph um, is that you didn't really, really have clear reasons. You did say that women have fought for their rights, but it really felt more like you were giving us a history lesson about women's rights rather than telling us the reasons why there are more women working and men are staying home. So you didn't really talk about that at all. Okay, so what should you have said here? Well, you could have said that um, one reason why women are working and men are staying home taking care of children is because women's earning power has increased. And so um, some families are finding that it makes more sense for the woman as the, um, as the um, person earning a higher salary to work while the man stays home and cares for children. Another thing that you could say is that along with women's rights increasing, uh, men's rights as far as paternity goes um, have increased. So whereas in the past it was unheard of for men to have uh, paternity leave if they had children, now this is something offered in many countries around the world by many companies. Okay, and so it allows um, families to make certain choices that feel more correct and appropriate for them. Okay, so these are some of the arguments. You have to talk about the reasons for this, okay? Um, because it's not just why there are more women in the workforce, but it's why women are going to work and men are staying home. And you didn't really cover that part at all. There was nothing about fathers here, okay? And so, um, this paragraph definitely needed a little work in terms of task achievement. Let's go on. Now, I'm a little concerned because this is like less than half of the previous paragraph, okay? Which means that it definitely was not developed as much as it should have been. Let's see what you said. I'm just telling you that it's a red flag and then we'll talk about it a little more in a minute. In my opinion, this is a positive development and shows, mm, and it shows a sign of progress in society, not as, both genders have to work together to get equal opportunities, IES, so that in the future, the next generation will have an equal opportunity. No, equal opportunity, equal opportunity in one sentence, not, not appropriate. Um, both genders have to work together um, to strive for their rights so that in the future, the next generation will have equal opportunities. Okay, that's a little better. Despite a person's gender, we don't say despite of, we say in spite of, or we say despite the person's gender, their goals will not be deprived. Okay, I don't know about this. This allows the parents to choose who will earn money for the family and who will take care of the family without social and traditional barriers. Okay, um, like I said, it was underdeveloped. <coughs> now, you'll notice that in task achievement, there is a section I think in band six, where it says some parts of the task are covered more than others. And that definitely feels like what you've done here. You really talked a lot about this, even though we already established that you didn't talk about it um, entirely the way that you should have. You didn't really, really, really talk about reasons. Here, I thought you just didn't cover the topic enough. Um, why is it a positive development? I liked what you said about, you know, people being able to choose um, who will earn money for their family and what's right for them and so forth. But I also think you should have um, said a little more here. So, I mean, there's got to be another reason why this is positive, okay? Um, like, why is this important? Why is this a good thing to happen in society, okay? Maybe you could have said that, um, you know, it, it allows children to also be raised by their fathers. And so this is really... Um, you know, this could potentially be an excellent 
um, you know, shift in our society, um, you know, allowing uh, this sort of change change to happen. So there were a lot of things you could have said, but in, in the point is that you needed to talk a little bit more about this. So to conclude, the increasing number of women in the workplace has brought benefits to the world. This became possible because of the changes in society and education, especially bringing gender discrimination closely to an end. Well, bring gender discrimination closely. This is awkward. And the endorsement of equal rights. Now, again, there's nothing about fathers staying at home. Okay? <laughs> it's like you've completely neglected that part, and you really shouldn't. Okay? Because that's a real, uh, that's basically the core of what this is. So you need to talk more about that. This is not just women going into the workforce, but it's men staying home. So uh, you need to cover that in your conclusion as well. So nice things happening in here, um, but there are some things that definitely needed to be worked on. Like I said, task achievement for me is the big one. So um, you should have another set of essays with us. Go ahead and do them. Um, I'll be waiting for them. I really want to see some of these changes and some of these um, things that we're talking about in these essays in your task achievement. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be waiting for your next set. Good luck.